Hi there and welcome to Hicks at Home. Now today's fish box we've got a roasted or barbecued turbot, completely up to you, uh, with a bone sauce. I hate wasting things and all these trimmings which you're going to get in your box, the fins, the head, the tail etc, is going to make a delicious fish soup style sauce. So very simple and uh, Turbot is, you know, one of the kings of the fishes, really. It's sort of a first division fish, nice and firm, one of my favourites. And the starter, we've got mussels cooked in cider. Uh, I use Boa Hill cider, Julian Templeys, which is one of my favourites. It tastes delicious. Good to drink whilst you're cooking. Mm. It's nice and dry and sort of tastes of the farm. And with the mussels, it's kind of an English version of more marinier, if you like. And I'm just gonna cook them in cider. And I'm gonna put chives, parsley, and wild garlic or ramsons, which have just come out into season. Uh, if you can't get hold of these, put a little bit of crushed garlic in at the beginning with the mussels. But by using all these lovely herbs, you get a nice flavour and colour in the mussels. So dead simple, hot pan, in with the mussels. In with the cider, a little bit of salt and pepper. And I'm going to put these herbs in straight away, right at the beginning. So I'm going to, all I'm going to do is chop these all the way through. And you've got a nice variety of herby flavours with the delicate hydrogalic. Now the important thing with mussels, I've che checked all these, any that are open, just because they're open it doesn't mean they're dead, it, it just means they sometimes, you know, get a bit of fresh air if you like. And the best thing to do is just to knock them or just squeeze them a little bit and if they close back again then they're obviously still alive. So the idea of the checking them for dead mussels is, you know, we don't want food poisoning. And even if they just died, you're really unlikely to get food poisoning, so... Unless they're really stinky. So, high heat. One of the simplest dishes you can make. Now, whilst they're cooking, just give them the odd shake every so often. You see the pan is getting hot there. And just by agitating the mussels a bit, that causes them to open because what you don't want to do is overcook the mussels like anything cockles clams you want to cook them till they're just just opened so the minute they start opening that means they're cooked so probably maximum one to two minutes now on your recipe there's a uh, there's a cream in the ingredients, so that's completely up to you. I quite like to cook them without cream, but like a classic more marinier, you can have it with or without. So you can just see now they're starting to open. Which means they're nearly ready. A nice little final shake, which kind of stirs them up as well at the same time. And you can see them all starting to open there, look. It. Your starter is done. So we need to now pop them into a bowl. And when you're serving these, you can do them individually or have a big bowl in the middle of the table and have a spare bowl for the shells. There 
go. A nice classic muscles insider. Right, so the next dish, I'm just going to rinse out my muscle pan and what you want to do is, as soon as you get your fish box, I'd get the sauce made. Uh, so the sauce is a bit like a fish soup. I've got one here that I was cooking, I started about an hour ago, look, look at that lovely, rich, rusty colour. And that is like a classic fish soup, which is going to become the sauce. So all we need is these little fish trimmings, some onion, just peeled and roughly chopped, nothing fancy. So that's all going to get mixed into the sauce. Got any little bits of skin like this, don't worry about it because that's all gonna go into the soup. Same with the garlic. I don't even bother peeling it most of the time. What I often do is just chop the thing in half like this. And put that in the soup. So get your pan hot in the stove. A little bit of rapeseed or olive oil. In with your bones. In with your garlic and onions. Peppercorns and fennel seeds. Thyme and bay leaf. I'll just cook them for a minute or two. Then we've got <coughs> some chopped tomatoes, all peeled plum tomatoes. That's going to give it a lovely rusty colour. Tomato puree and some fish stock. Now, if you haven't got fresh fish stock, a good cube is absolutely fine. So all we're going to do is stir those around a little bit. Add our tomatoes. Tomato puree. With a dish like this, there's no harm in using a stock cube, a good stock cube, because, you know, if you go to the trouble of making a, a fresh fish stock, really the, the flavour of the bones and all the other ingredients is going to be the main thing. So using a little stock cube isn't really cheating. It's just really, you know, taking a sensible shortcut, I'd say. A little bit of wine, which I served. Is from Tim McLaughlin Green, my wine, wine supplier, which is going to go on the fish house menu, Cocky de Mer, very appropriate for this. Another swig of cider whilst we're cooking. And you're just going to let that simmer for 45 minutes, an hour, a bit longer if you want. Now I've obviously got my one here on the go. Rather good. So what happens is all the bones start to dis disintegrate. There's little bits of fish come off and they sort of naturally thicken it. Right. Now for the fish. So you can barbecue this or you can just roast it in the oven. Or if you've got a ribbed griddle pan uh, they're also very handy. So all I'm going to do is season the fish on both sides with salt and pepper. I've got 
Archie from Black Cow filming me today again. He's my main photographer, cameraman. <laughs> Rapes it all. So, a nice hot pan, preferably a non stick pan. That way, you're not going to run into any problems. Once that's hot, you can just flip it over. You don't have to flip it over, up to you. You just pop that in a very hot oven. For about 15 minutes or so. So back to the sauce. I'm just gonna switch them over. You don't really wanna watch that simmering away for ages. Now this is, sort of naturally thickened nicely. But if not, just give it a very quick blend. My blender, let's run out of battery now. Okay, with a stick blender. Just all, we, all we're looking to do here is blending about a quarter or a third of it, which gives it that nice thickness. But don't do what I've just done. Or if you want, you can put a little bit of it into a blender or Nutribullet. Right, so all we're going to do now is strain that off. Just a conical or a fine strainer, up to you. Beeping here. Everything beeps these days, doesn't it? Toaster beeps, timer beeps. Okay, so the turbot is ready. The, the bone sauce is nicely reduced and thickened. Else. And, it, and that turbot is nicely roasted. So all you do with this is we pour the sauce in a sharing. I like a bit of sharing. You pour your sauce in there. And then we just gently the turbo out. And there we go, that's your dish. Now to serve it, whether there's two of you or four of you, the best thing to do is simply just to lift it off the bone, like this. So, there's one bone only going through the middle. So all you do is just lift that away from the bone. It comes quite easily, as you can see. And by cooking it on the bone, my favorite way, it keeps it nice and moist. So you can put this in the middle of the table and you can both just help yourselves, or all four of you. And that just comes away nicely, look at that. A beautiful bit of fish. Or if you want, you can cut it in half and put a lump on your partner, friends, guests. Okay, there we go. Roast turbot with bone sauce. <laughs>